Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with a blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Michael Bastion MB Chrono Wing smartwatch. Um, this is one of the latest uh, smartwatches to come out. It uh, just went on sale a couple of days uh, ago before I filmed this review. Um, and this is an interesting evolution in sort of where smartwatches are going. Um, the story behind this watch gets a little confusing, and in the written review on a blog to watch, I really sort of go into the genesis of this of this product, and it becomes confusing because there's three entities involved. There's Guilt.com that is involved in the sales side. There's Michael Bastion, who is a fashion designer involved in the design of the watch, and there's Hewlett Packard, the large computer company. Um, that is involved in the hardware and the software um, in this. So there's a lot of things kind of going on, and it's it's interesting to think about where it's going to go. So first of all, let's look at the watch itself. What this gets right is design. This is a good-looking watch. The case design is, well, let's just say adopted from a couple of popular Swiss watches. There's some IWC in here and the Ingenieur. That's a very heavy element, of course. There's a little bit of Audemars Piguet, a little bit of Hublot. Um, so <clears throat> these are not accidents. This is how the fashion world works. It takes successful designs and tries to sort of trickle them down into different products, and that's sort of the way it goes. And that's okay. You can't you can't fault them for there. I think that it's safe to say that compared to a lot of other smartwatches currently on the market, this is by far a much better looking one. And for that, I want to congratulate Michael Bastian and his team for getting it right. One of the things he wanted to do is make sure that the dial was not totally, totally digital. So you have the sub dial here, and that's where you're gonna read the time via these analog hands. That is good. The bad news is that in terms of legibility, it's going to be a little bit hard to see sometimes. There's a fun little trick here. Um, they reverse the screen from a negative one to a positive one when you turn the backlight on. So when you hold this on here, you probably won't see, able to see the backlight. Yeah, it's too bright in here. But you'll see that the screen changes like that so that when the backlight goes on, that the screen also changes to make it a little bit more legible. So that's cool. Um, I would have liked for there to be one of those accelerometers where you can like move your wrist um, and that would be something that would allow you to uh, turn on the backlight. Um, I like the detailing here on the buttons. There are only three buttons, meaning the entire watch is controlled via these three buttons and these three buttons only. Um, as you can see, it's a simple monochromatic LCD screen. I think it's like 128 by 128 resolution. And in terms of functionality, it's mostly a, <clears throat> a notification device. So whereas some smartwatches are going to feature um, a lot of different functions and things like that, they're going to have low battery life, um, the Chrono Wing is sort of going to be more simple, offer up to a week of battery life, as they say. I think realistically it's going to be more, uh, you know, three or four days, maybe five days. Uh, I think a week is a little bit ambitious, um, but... That's generally that. So let's go to the home screen right here. Uh, you hold that down. The home screen has the current uh, temperature and then there's like a little icon over there for the weather. So there's just some clouds. Um, you can see I have no notifications, no text messages, no emails. Poor me. You can see the date on there. And then you can scroll through various functions. There's a there's a chronograph stop, you know, style stopwatch. Uh, this is would be a local time. I like this. It says the sunrise. That's cool. And if you go here, you can change. You can you can go into the app, which I'll show you in a second. Click a few cities, and then scroll th through them. Um, and, and and I actually I think that's pretty cool that they actually have the uh, the sunrise sunset time. That's pretty neat. Um, and you can click here to go back. Let's go back to stopwatch. I'm going the wrong way. Um, this would be calendar events, and and you can see various things there. There's a few screens here only because I've actually disabled some. There's a music player. There's an ability to see stocks, and that's all controlled through the app. And the reason I've disabled those is because I don't use those. I don't really need to see stocks, um, their performance on my wrist. And you can select some stocks, and that's essentially how you you will you will look through them. So, so the the user interface is actually pretty good. Um, it's not amazing. I'm not like, wow, wow, wow. But 
once you learn it, you spend a couple minutes, you're not confused. And that's that's definitely a concern for me. Sometimes you'll be in a situation where there'll be um, a new kind of technology watch and you don't know how to use it. And that, that kind of sucks. So in terms of functionality, you know, it doesn't do a whole lot of stuff, but when it comes to basic notifications it works well when you get a new text message in i've experienced that the watch updates pretty quickly and it'll it'll show you the text message right away um you can see very little of the text message so you can't scroll through the whole thing but i think just sort of looking at seeing who it came from in the first line or two that'll give you enough to know whether or not you want to go to your phone and learn more or you can just sort of dismiss it when you do dismiss a notification on the watch it doesn't affect the phone, meaning it's not going to like show your emails as, as being read or anything like that. So overall, pretty okay. And I'd say it's sort of on par with some of the other better notification style smartwatches. So let's go to the app for a second. And there's something that's really, well, <clears throat> I don't want to say funny, but kind of amusing a little bit for me. Um, so you open the app and the first thing you see is um, like, I don't know if it's random, but there's like a picture of a model wearing Michael Bastion clothing. It says, explore the world of Michael Bastion. So it's like the first thing they're doing is like saying, hey, you want to, oh, here's another one. You want to see some clothing? Um, and I'm kind of like, that's that's funny because I don't assume that when you are using the app for your smartwatch, you're curious about seeing like fashion. It's, it, I just thought it's kind of funny. It was like, like product placement almost. Um, the app is okay. It's pretty simple, um, but it gets the job done. I mean, it's a little finicky. Again, this just came out, and this is a new thing, so you can't expect for there to be, like, amazing functionality. This screen allows you to rearrange the order of the menu screens. Okay, kind of useful, but if you go to edit here, that's when you can, like, actually disable some, and you can see here um, what the various options are. So I have music and stocks disabled, but the rest of the ones are enabled, which is good. Um, pretty basic settings. You have your battery life, um, things like that. This is where you're going to use a lot of stuff because that's where you're going to check certain stuff out like your, your stocks. I erased them all because I didn't want any. Um, calendar preferences. You can tell some stuff. Weather locations. Um, again, this is the app is still early, so I found a little bit of issues in typing in some cities. So I, was, I, I try to put in Geneva, and it, it won't find Geneva. Um, so that's, but you can type in, like, I typed in loss. There's something else in Switzerland. So it's like, it finds some things, but not others. Um, I'm not really sure why that is right now. Let's see if it can find Zurich. Okay, so Zurich it can find. That's pretty good. So I found some places it can't find, others it can. Um, so we'll put Zurich in there, I guess, because it's the same time as, as Geneva. So you can do that, and then you can, you can re, that's for the weather. You can do the same thing for world clocks. You have to go to every single one. And then you have to actually rearrange their order. So there's always going to be a default one. And, and you have to rearrange it so that the, the top one is the default. And it doesn't really tell you that. But you just sort of have to figure that out. Um, so there's, there's a help and troubleshooting thing where you can go and look, which is fine. Um, what I do like is the fact that you have an opportunity to see. This thing just vibrated right here. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, you have an opportunity to have some type of flexibility in there, but not a huge, huge amount. But again, I think that the whole concept that Michael Bastion and Hewlett Packard were going for was, was simplicity, not making it too complicated, giving it a sort of accessibility that the sort of mainstream consumer would feel comfortable with. So again, you have to use the app. It's Bluetooth. Other other issues are, you know, when you when you have a watch... Um, it's connected or any device which is connected via Bluetooth all the time. It's going to suck the, the battery life on your phone, sometimes significantly. And that's not a smartwatch's fault. That's kind of just the fault of Bluetooth in general. I am not a fan of Bluetooth. I do not like Bluetooth. I would not be Bluetooth's friend. Um, but that's kind of what we got right now. I want to show you the other two straps that come with the watch. Again, this is supposed to be a fashion item, so you're supposed to be able to um, switch it out a little bit. So this is on kind of a black, um, sort of like plasticky strap. It's supposed to feel like rubber, but it's I think it's like a polyurethane strap. Then you have this um, sort of perforated brown leather, which is nice, and then this kind of green 
khaki canvas, which I actually like a lot. This one's pretty cool. I just, I happen to put it on this black one and it comes with, it comes with some changing tools right here, which is nice um, so that you can change it yourself, which is, which is good. And I definitely think they did a good job of making this feel like a, like a wristwatch experience. So on the plus side, you have a simple user interface, which is nice. Attractive case design, steel, 44 millimeters wide. Price isn't too bad, and there's some, you know, definite style of variety, um, which is nice. So th those are good things. Negative sides are legibility is not amazing, um, especially when it comes to reading the time. One thing I would have really loved to do is have some flexibility in the app so that you could adjust the the different things you see on the dial the way you want to see them. So if you want to like mess around with this space and add something or take something away, you can't really do that right now. And I think that'd be really great if you could be a little bit more flexible in how you use this space. So for example, what if I didn't want to read the time in this analog way, but I wanted to have it digitally, but I wanted to use this space maybe for like the temperature. Um, I mean, you could do it with the graphics, but you don't have the opportunity within the app to have that type of flexibility. And I think that would be a major, major improvement to make it so you could have your own kind of custom uh, screens on here. Um, and then there's always the battery life issue. So even though this is gonna have a lot better battery life than the sort of color touch screen smartwatches that exist, um, you know, it's still a lot, it's not like two weeks or something like that. It's gonna be a couple days and that's fine. Um, but that's not really my issue with battery life. It's mostly that it, it sucks so much from your phone itself. And that's just, again, that's not HP's fault. That's just sort of, part of the issue. Smartwatches are still new and people expecting like a super refined user experience are going to have to wait a little bit longer. So, you know, in thinking about who the target demographic is for something like the Chrono Wing, I'm thinking people that aren't really wearing a watch right now. We're not wearing a watch that they're very emotionally invested in. They're wearing um, something a little bit more basic or not no watch at all, and all of a sudden they want to get into smartwatches. And this is probably a good way to do it. I'd say this is a good way to sort of get into to smartwatches for sure. Charging the watch is a little, uh, I don't have it right here, but there's a little magnetic dock it connects right here, um, and then you just plug it in via USB. I like the case bag, actually. The Michael Bastion logo looks really nice. And as far as I know, right now, you can only buy this watch um, on uh, Gilt's, uh, Gilt, Gilt.com's website, maybe for a little limited time. I'm not sure um, exactly what their plans are, but uh, it's it's a cool thing, and, I, and I'm, I'm really happy to sort of be reviewing items like this. Oh, one last thing I want to mention was the fact that when it comes to notifications, there is, you, there's a vibration and there's something on the screen. You don't have the option of it beeping or anything like that. And I think sometimes the vibration might be a little short or be something that is, is, is a little on the easier side to miss. Anyways, this is the Michael Bastion MB Chrono Wing. See, I'm getting all these emails in and you just get close there to sort of dismiss it. It's actually pretty useful. I, I, I like that. Um, Chrono Wing, and the retail price is $349. There was a limited edition that sold out that was like $649 that had a sapphire crystal, uh, an alligator strap, and a PVD black case, but there's no more of those, at least not for now. Anyways, you can read the full review on a blog to watch. Thanks. <laughs>